Rahul Gandhi is talking about body language. I mean, this is a politician who has made headlines in the past for his flippant behavior in parliament. Sure, he's not the prime minister. Sure, it's not the same standard he must be subjected to. He's not the executive. I, 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 I grant that. But here's a guy who, you know, who is very casual in parliament. He's been accused of using parliament as an extension of his living room during the infamous hug and wink episode. There was that, in my view, very needless flying kiss episode that happened. He's a man who's very casual. He laughs. He, you know, uh, gestures with his thumbs up. And here he is lecturing someone about giggling and being casual in parliament. Anshul, I'm only no, saying I... it because he brought it up. Yeah, no, I'm, t I'm telling you, Shiv, are you really sure that the opposition needs to be cross-examined after I don't. All this, I'm just asking happened. because, no, no, because that was the no, no. thrust of Similarly. Rahul Gandhi's press conference, Anshul. That was the... No, he no, no, mentioned no. it four times. Not it's once, almost... not twice, not thrice. Four times he said, shameless prime minister is laughing and giggling. I'll say it another 50 times. I heard that speech. Uh, it's my great misfortune that I have to hear him every single time. It's a punishment for me, Chair. That I have to hear him, but he's the prime minister of this country. Mm. I must latch on to every single word he says. And I'm deeply disappointed every time he says it, with every single statement, with every single comment, his every single falsehood. And that is what has happened in that speech yesterday. And I'll tell you the falsehoods. And the, the irony, you talk about irony, I already spoke about how irony dies every time he says, utters this word, which is your movement about the word he's coined up, all, all kinds of leveling, all kinds of baseless charges. But I'm not sure. I... In all fairness, I've said that there is a time for politics. I have nothing against politics. We're in the game of politics, right? You trade charges, you say all kinds of things, even if they're degraded and cheap. And I understand. And but Anshul, just answer me one question. I, 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 I hear what you're saying and what you're saying is entirely reasonable because there is a place and time for politics and political barbs. There's, you know, why, why can't they happen in parliament? And at one level, you know, Rahul Gandhi even talking about body language is totally legitimate. I mean, in this, in this atmosphere, 10 months before elections, that's fair. My question is, was this really just about politics and Modi rather than about Manipur? You had the Home Minister call for a joint resolution on Manipur. You had the Prime Minister talk about Manipur. The opposition walked out before he could talk about Manipur. It gives the public impression that for the opposition, for Rahul Gandhi, for the Congress Party, this was not about Manipur. This was not about having a substantive discussion about Manipur, as, uh, as was stated to be the case with the no-trust vote, but about attacking the Prime Minister personally, which is fine, but at least come out and say it then. Shiv, you're talking about the opposition not bringing Manipur to the forefront. Do tell me. Not at all. I praise the opposition for doing it. it. Just tell me. I'm answering your yeah. question, Chief. Yes. I am just saying that if the Prime Minister brings out Manipur for the very reason that we've called him there, because to break his silence on this very important He should have topic, done it earlier. Because he, yeah. No, no. To what sense does it make for it to bring out after one and a half hours? Is that giving an importance? Have you asked that question? Why don't you ask the Prime Minister that question? We that did. We did have. Bring up you the, haven't seen, a, you haven't seen our discussion topic, last night. Right in the, Anshul, we Why had a discussion last night and where we talked about how the Prime Minister began about Manipur after minute 96. We've discussed it threadbare here. I'm only bringing this up now because of Rahul Gandhi's words. Yeah, finish your point, Anshul. No, no, I am just simply saying that the Prime Minister's speech, like his all his other speeches, but this is, makes it particularly so because it was in the floor of this house and it was on such a critical matter at such a critical juncture in our history, was exceedingly distasteful. And I'm using my words very carefully. Actually, I'm, I'm not even going ahead and saying what I really think of that speech. I'm using, marking my words. It was cheap and it was a distasteful speech. And the Prime Minister should have known better as being the head of the... Of the biggest okay. democracy in the world. Karan, is this a at this point. You know, th this is okay. I mean, in politics, this kind of thing goes. But is this a shifting of goalposts? Because, you know, a substantive answer on Manipur did come from the Home Minister. The Prime Minister mentioned it. Now it's about, you started talking about it too late. You should have started from right the beginning. You know, when so many other speeches were about things other than Manipur, now the Prime Minister is being castigated for not starting his speech on Manipur. I think that's ridiculous. I mean, you can't dictate terms when to speak what. If he would have not spoken about Manipur, that would have been understandable. But he did speak about it. In fact, unfortunately, it's the opposition that walked out when he started speaking about it. Look, the opposition in this entire thing, 
they had a great opportunity to demand accountability and answers they have squandered that golden opportunity and which is why they are not able to stomach this fact that the government which wanted a discussion on this they've been let off the hook where they did have an advantage to question it and even today you look at the ship even today they are obsessed with prime minister modi's body language they are still not asking the hard questions on manipur they are obsessed with the prime minister making a statement what kind of body language he has they are still not coming up with substantial arguments as to That's... why the tension is brewing there Except That's for Gaurav Bhopai, who did come up with two questions, none That's... of them have come up with anything substantial. Nothing no, no, at all. And that nobody is what came with any specific. All nobody gas from the and opposition. No nobody from the opposition, and not Rahul Gandhi in particular. Provided any specific points as far right. as Manipur was concerned, I also want to point out one more paradox, uh, Anshul, uh, uh, with the greatest of respect, is that there were so many people in the opposition, uh, uh, you know, who gave speeches who didn't touch upon Manipur. Gaurav Gogoi started fabulous speech. Let me say it categorically and on record here: fabulous opening speech that stuck to the Manipur issue. After that, you had a whole bunch of people, including Rahul Gandhi, who spent the first 14 minutes talking about the Bharat Jodo Yatra, etc. Dimple Yadav, Kani Mori, uh, and the others who didn't talk Priya about Manipur, and, and then and then you're attacking the Prime Minister, you know, for not talking about uh, Manipur for the first 90 minutes, and this is a day Shiv. after the Home Minister spent an hour and a half speaking about Manipur and nothing else. Shiv, when the opposition walked out yesterday, there was not even a whiff of Manipur. The, we had no idea even Manipur was coming or not. You almost make it sound as if the That's prime minister was there. That's ridiculous. I'm sure. Ha, Did you ha, know Manipur was coming? Did you have any idea when Manipur was coming, if at all? No, how did you have an idea how, it was coming? Nobody had any how idea. How could anyone the have prime known if it was coming? I said nothing. When you wanted out, the prime minister to speak. The prime minister was speaking. No, he wasn't. It was that cheap sloganeering and guarantees. About that, you know, I guarantee. Hey, I mean, the typical manner in which he says it, which I can't recount, I can't even mimic it. I don't want to. It was terrible, and that is when it walked out. And they said, "The listen, what's going on here?" And by the way, this is the executive. You know, you have the uh, the tyranny of the executive in this country. We There asked them the question doubt. yesterday, Anshul. I I will send yeah. you the link of yesterday's discussion on how we've taken the government to task. on not enough answers on day 3 as far as manipur is concerned we have done it i will send you the link sure, but my sure, question good. is you know, if you're yeah. talking about if you're to- if this issue was at the initiative of the opposition rahul gandhi was leading the charge on day 2 then please explain to me and, and 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 believe me i am not i am not here questioning the opposition i am simply asking this question because rahul gandhi has brought it up i am saying if rahul gandhi spoke for 35 minutes why for the first 14 minutes was he talking about his transformation about his knee injury about the bharat jodo yatra why didn't he go from start to finish about manipur yes he was very emphatic in the end but why wasn't it from start to finish that's the same thing that the other side will ask you absolutely not no the prime minister who cares about no his self self transformation the jeering uh, no shib let me answer that question there has been no connect between the prime minister's jibe and jeering and jest and laughter and the mockery and then coming down to manipur at a time when the opposition was not then we had no idea it was coming down the, the rahul gandhi speech there was about empathy it was about listening to the people he was building a ground for coming to manipur it had the same tenor there is no absolutely no comparison you were talking about listening to india and finding solutions look this is the executive look uh, shiv this is the executive we are talking about who is in power in this country 